Ah, uh, man. I don't even know how to start this. Um, I've tried to record this like so many times over the last couple weeks and every time I think about it, I get like anxiety or something. What do I say? Where do I begin? What do I say? Um, uh, especially because you all know I want always for my videos to be encouraging for you all. But I actually think that's probably been my biggest downfall in sharing everything with you guys is, you know, sometimes things in life aren't pretty. They're not cute, they're not perfect. They're not um, YouTube ready, you know? They're just, they just are. Like things just are what they are. And um, yeah, woo, y'all. Let's just start off with the reality that this video is gonna be very different <laughs> than, well, maybe not entirely different than what we're used to because I cry on my channel, y'all know. I share testimony on my channel, all that, but um, yeah, these are just not the kind of videos that you plan. Um, for those of you who are new, um, and this is your first video you're watching of me, I hope you'll check out some other videos as well. Um, you'll get your, you know, beautiful intro and your uh, subscribe and like and all the fun stuff. But today I just really want to share with you guys. I'm actually on my way to Ohio for winter break. My first time back in Ohio in three months. <sighs> so I am so excited to see my family. Um, woo, okay, I'm already crying. Um, for those who aren't aware, my dad, um, was suddenly ill in August. Um, he's never been ill in his 64 years of life. Um, never been in the hospital, never had surgery, and I get a call that my mom is taking, to him, taking him to the hospital. And you know, those calls are never fun, but you always try to keep you know, a positive mind. And um, yeah, you just try to hope for the best. Try not to freak out, especially me, because I'm prone to anxiety channel so I was trying to stay calm long story short a lot of things unraveled over the next month um, that resulted in them finding a mass on his pancreas that in fact was cancerous so he went through a pretty intense surgery and has a scar about a foot long now on his front side across his belly um, and although they thought they got it all and we were rejoicing and excited, we um, got the news that they were recommending that he go through chemotherapy. So um, he has at least 11 treatments of chemotherapy. He began in October, I believe, at the end of October. He's on about his fifth treatment, I think, he just came up on and He's doing well, y'all. Like, I, I want to say that. Like, he's doing so well. And um, his cancer cell count is down. He is so encouraged and excited about life. And he retired. This all happened actually right when he retired after 45 years. Um, almost 46, I believe, years at his company. So... A lot of crazy things happening at one time but he's resting and you know staying active and you know he has rough days chemotherapy if anybody knows anything about it is not easy but he is going through it with such joy and um, it makes me feel kind of guilty for you know not choosing joy like if he's going through it and he's joyous then what the heck am I upset about but it's just weird to start to see your parents health you know 
take a hit and the reality that they're getting older and it's just like then I want to say Lord really when I moved to Virginia away from the Midwest where I can't reach them I've been in Ohio for three years straight and now when I moved to Virginia is when this happens it's just like wow so not being able to be there not being able to support my mom you know she's carrying a lot of the weight of it and then Sunday um Sunday I get a call that she was taken to the hospital um I'm sorry y'all My mom was taken to the hospital on Sunday. There were concerns for a stroke. She was there for two or three days. Um, ran tests. Um, she had been disoriented on Sunday and didn't know where she was. High blood pressure spike, couldn't remember the day, couldn't remember conversations. Um, so that's what motivated her to be taken to urgent care and then they transferred her to the hospital for more tests. And my dad, because his immune system is compromised with the chemo, could not be with her. So to think like, my mom is alone in the hospital and they don't know what's going on and I'm here. I can't do anything. I felt helpless, I felt angry angry with God like and I know a lot of us were taught growing up you know that that's inappropriate disrespectful to be angry with God but these last couple weeks couple months I'm like I just have to keep it real like if we're gonna call this a relationship with God then I need to be 100 and say that my current circumstances feel like this is too much at one time. This is just too much. And I don't understand why it had to happen like this. I don't understand why it had to happen right now. I don't know. Like most people, I don't understand 2020, okay, sis? You don't make no sense. I don't understand you. I can't understand you and I'm gonna stop trying Oh my gosh. So, just as an update, my, my mom is home. She's doing okay, she's resting. She's taking the medication that they gave her and um, her blood pressure is back to normal right now and I'm just praying that it stays that way. Um, but I also realized that even after she was home, you know, I had this like burst of like adrenaline when she first um, call me or burst of dopamine you know to see her face on FaceTime and to see her laugh and smile and she was home but I kept flashing back to when I was speaking to her on Sunday and she wasn't there you know she wasn't there with me and, and the trauma of seeing someone so strong you know that you look up to this wise that's always holding it down in such a vulnerable state and there was nothing that I could do and so then I, uh, those feelings don't go away, you know, like even seeing her better, the trauma of just feeling helpless, of uh, feeling like both of your parents are, you know, in this vulnerable state and there's nothing that you can do, you can't be there, you know, it just, it's just very, it's very strange and it's very, um, yeah. So that's part of what I wanted to share with you guys that, um, man, as much as I love sharing my story with you guys and sharing, you know, my journey, I have just been getting whooped on <laughs> by life and I know somebody has it worse or somebody's 2020 or everybody's 2020 looked like something, but I can only 
share from my experience and what I know. And this has felt like a lot for me. If you go back to the moving series, I was so excited about Virginia and the opportunity to share the last leg of my PhD with you guys and just kind of walk through this journey together and get to document it all. Like when I lived in Chicago and when I was an undergrad, I didn't have a blog, I didn't have a camera. But now I do and I was so excited to show someone the journey and to show someone that this is possible and to document this part of my life, even for me to look back on. Um, so it's very frustrating that being overwhelmed with everything going on, the first thing to go is social media and YouTube. Not only does social media just feel very overwhelming in 2020, I don't know if that's anybody else's opinion, it's a lot but also when it comes to youtube i don't i feel like i don't have time i feel like i don't have time to sit down with a camera and do something that i love and share with you guys and document and share on instagram because every time i get ready to even think about doing that i look at my to-do list and it's out the window so that leads me into talking about my internship because since i haven't been able to update you guys on what's going on um I want to begin by saying that this is a blessing from God that I am here. This is a wonderful opportunity for anyone in the position of pursuing a school psychology degree. But y'all, when I tell you I am tired, I am so tired. And I was scared to tell y'all or show y'all this side because... I don't even know what my reasoning is. I feel like it would discourage people from going after a PhD or pursuing a degree like this. But y'all, I have been in school since kindergarten <laughs> without a break. And I know I've joked about that before, but I am tired. And I'm so tired that I am feeling disconnected from what I'm doing. Like I feel like I'm just going through motions I feel like I'm just performing, I, I don't feel fulfilled, I y'all have questioned so much in the last month if I'm even doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which imagine spending all this money, all this time, doing all these things and feeling like I can't even be confident that I am where I'm supposed to be, like I, I, I don't even... I'm like, Lord, and I know everyone loves to share cliche, but also true statements like the Lord didn't bring you this far to leave you and, you know, he's, he's brought you so far and I know what he's provided every step of the way. He has gone above and beyond to give me opportunities that I never dreamt of, but right now I'm like, Lord, this, I just feel like this should feel different. I feel like... I should be more confident in the fact that I have spent all this time and effort here and I should feel some connection to what I'm doing. I have no boundaries. College has no boundaries. Internships have no boundaries. I don't get to close my laptop at the end of a work day or enjoy my weekends. And everybody says, you know, well self care, you have to take that time, you have to advocate for yourself. But as someone who has struggled with the reality that I love to please, I love to excel, I like to do my job and do it well, I am going to, I'm, I'm not going to stop until the work is done, right? Like I can't, it doesn't do me any good. Like sometimes I have to physically remove myself from working in order to take a break and then realize, oh, I actually had time to take a break. Like I... And because of that, my anxiety has been off the charts. And for those who found my channel by way of the mental health video that I shared a couple years ago, I don't know if I can even bring myself to watch that because I was in such a different place. I was in counseling, you know, every two weeks um, for like a year, two years of my time actually three years for three years I was either in group counseling or individual counseling for the entire time that I was in Columbus but due to the change of state and rules and etc you know I was gonna have to find a new counselor and that felt overwhelming so I kind of haven't 
and you know for a minute there because I was doing well I assumed I could handle it or you know that what I learned and what I was working through would just continue to help me and assist me as I you know moved to Virginia and the reality is that's just not the case um, that I'm in a space in my life where I still need assistance with my mental health and you know I'm like how do I get on here and tell them that after doing all that advocating that I'm not even advocating for myself right now that I'm allowing my anxiety to rage and, and not taking the steps that I know I need to take to get better I talked to you all in that video about the stigma of it and I thought I was past that you know like after being in counseling for all that time I thought I was past it but I realized I was trying to carry my anxiety on my own and tell myself that it was just going to get better or almost that it wasn't as bad as it was. And it wasn't until I paused to take a screener, just a general anxiety screener on online and seeing my numbers be off the chart off of a screener, I was like, oh, so you're like not well. <laughs> Like you need to, you need to get help right now. And of course it's exacerbated by, you know, being overwhelmed in my internship, trying to find some way to get this dissertation done so that I can be done in the spring. Going through an entire pandemic on top of all of this and how that's changed my internship, how that's changed my ability to finish my dissertation. Being disconnected from everyone. Y'all haven't touched, hugged another human being and like, three months <laughs> and at least two months and I'm like these are things we just didn't I don't know did I take it for granted that I could get a hug or that I could touch other people or be around other people like man it just feels like I'm walking through the worst season of my life alone and this is not to say that the people in my life who love me haven't checked on me or called me but sometimes y'all, you don't even know what to say to get the help you need, you know, or get what you need. When I shared about my parents, a lot of people kept saying like, let me know if you need anything, let me know if you need anything. And I know people mean well when they say that, even when I feel like I've said it before, and you mean well, but like, every time I would say thank you, but I would, I, it was like all these things were swirling in my head about what I needed, but I didn't know how to communicate that. I didn't know how to say, this is what I need. So I just said, thank you. Because I, I don't know, I don't know how to tell you what I need. It's just a very weird season to walk through and you do feel alone and you have to fight the demons. And because of all of this put together, I feel the furthest away from God than I probably have ever felt in my life and that was another scary thing to bring to YouTube because I've shared my spiritual journey on here so many times in my relationship with God and what that means to me so I knew the people that would be subscribed to me would be really confused to hear something like that come out of my mouth you know like I thought you were reading through the Bible in a year and I thought you were you know XYZ all of the things and the reality is that I even feel like who are you and almost ashamed because it's like I know my faith is stronger than this I know I know better you know I know how to access God when I need him but I've allowed the cares of life and the things that are going on to overwhelm me to a point where I don't even do what I know I need to do to reach God you know like I know he didn't move I know it was me that moved and allowed my circumstances to move me but like i don't know i don't know y'all it i it, it has been so hard to pray it has felt like my prayers are paper thin you know when i can motivate myself and push myself to even speak out one word to god or you know let just listen to a worship song sometimes that's the only thing that keeps me connected. Um, I shared on my Instagram a couple weeks ago that, you know, I just let everyone know that I was okay. Cause a lot of you guys are reaching out in my DMs, just like, girl, where are you? Are you doing Vlogmas? 
um, you know, what are the updates, what's going on, all the things, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm alive. Um, I'm sorry, but I am okay, and you know, just shared some things, but then I also posted the two songs that literally, y'all, I just looped them. The music has really kept me and pointed me back to God, even though, you know, like I said, I felt so far away. Sometimes I just feel like I get a glimpse of him again when I listen to those songs or watch the, the videos on YouTube and just let them play. So I'm trying, that's all I got, I'm trying. Um, and then the last thing I wanna update you guys on is the fact that um, I am single again. Um, man, this is truly the video I never wanted to make. You know, I shared the journey with you guys. You guys walked with me through, you know, my first video of Saved Single Left Behind, sharing about how I'd never been kissed at 25, you know, last, wow, that was February of 2019 that I was sharing that with you guys. And then everything that unfolded and being in my first relationship only months later and sharing the love story with you guys and um, yeah. <sighs> yeah. I did not want to come on here and tell you guys because some of y'all still comment on those videos. I still get such sweet comments on those videos and for a minute there I thought about taking them down. Um, just because it was hard to to see the comment. I also wanted to be careful because I'm not in the business of confusing my audience and I don't want y'all to think that I take this relationship stuff lightly or you know it's for clickbait or views like this is my real life and I want to you know as especially as a believer as a as a woman as a millennial I wanted to be a good example for you guys. I didn't want to, you know, play around or, you know, even with the fact that we just took fall pictures in October that I posted and, you know, everybody was so excited and, you know, hyping us up in the comments and, you know, I shared one with you guys here on YouTube and I didn't want y'all to think, you know, like, oh, I'm confused. Like, I just didn't, I didn't want, yeah, I didn't want to confuse anyone or, make y'all think that I, you know, was playing games. I'm not at all, obviously. I think those who really have walked this journey out with me, you know, they know. They know that I take this stuff seriously, um, relationships seriously. But, you know, we're still best friends, you guys. We probably gonna be best friends to the end of time. So that's the good news about it is I didn't lose my best friend. And that was the one, that was the one promise that we made to each other before we ever started this was, at the very least, we would not lose each other, hopefully, as best friends. Um, and if you're looking for, you know, the drama and the beef or the whatever, first of all, you won't find that here on my channel ever. And I know some of y'all just clicked on it for that and I'm so sorry to disappoint, but also, sorry, not sorry. I'm very happy to disappoint you and say, y'all won't hear me talk bad about him. Y'all won't hear him talk bad about me. There was no drama or mess that broke us up. Sometimes when, when it's peaceful like that, apparently that means it, it was supposed to be that way um or that was a good decision but i just felt the holy spirit laying it on my heart for a while that there were some things that he needed to do in each of us um that were not going to get done with us being in a relationship and you know that we had grown comfortable and we weren't necessarily you know focused or purposed and um man to be in a comfortable relationship is great, but complacency can stand in the way of growth. And to think that, you know, we're long distance and I'm, y'all heard me talk about everything going on in my life 
um, just trying really hard to strive after some goals right now that are a priority. You know, I just uh, some other priorities right now. So we've been broken up for a little while now, and you know what? I am I'm okay. But the moral of all of this is like I'm acknowledging that I'm not okay, but I'm okay. I'm doing my absolute best to stay focused. I'm doing my absolute best to try to extend myself some grace and all this. I'm doing my absolute best to just keep literally dragging one foot in front of the other. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Like, I, I thinking back to my 2020 video. <laughs> and where I sit right now, you guys, it'll make you angry if you let it. Like, I was thinking about that video and all of the things that I professed about 2020 and felt so strongly that God was laying on my heart. And I think at some point I need to go back and look at that video and reflect on it to see how did those things still come about in 2020. Because to be honest, I think that was part of my anger and frustration with God is how did you let me get that excited and get my hopes up? for all of these things that I spoke into the air so specifically that I wrote down, that I wrote in my journal, that I wrote in my Bible so confidently. And here I sit, December, what is today? December 19th, without the relationship that I thought was going to look very differently at the start of this year, with two parents who are not at 100% health, in a pandemic, in an internship and overall degree program that is literally making me feel like I can't breathe. And a dissertation that I still have to finish, that in my mind was gonna be way finished by now, but that I now still have to finish in order for me to graduate. And the reality is that I probably won't even have an actual graduation ceremony. <laughs> and it's just like, Lord, what was the point? I mean, literally, what was the point? And I have faith that in time, he will reveal it to me. And I just, I have to hold on to that faith. If I don't hold on to the faith that there was a purpose in all this, y'all, I already feel like I'm broken. You know, I already feel like this is too much. So if I let go of the faith and the hope that there was a purpose in all this, I can't think about that. I can't think about that. So I'm just going to keep holding on to the hope and looking out for God to reveal why. Last thing that I wanna say specifically about relationships is that the other reason I was so gentle about it is because I know so many girls that share their story that is similar to mine on my first time kids video and then you guys will find my um, first relationship video almost immediately after and be in the comments on that like oh my gosh I just watched your other video you know and now I see that you know this was your time this is your turn and I'm so excited for you and I don't want you all to lose hope because I do feel myself y'all slipping back into the no hope category or the I don't care category of relationships and just being like you know, I was happy single, I was fine single, and I can do that. I'm good at single. I didn't wanna discourage y'all. I didn't wanna contribute to, you know, you all losing hope, and that's why I'm being really cautious about my words, because the reality is, your girl is, <laughs> man. Part of the reason that it took me a while to make the, even make the decision was I was thinking about how, you know, I didn't want to fail. You know, I didn't want to fail. It felt like failure to me. I love, love, love Evelyn from the internet. Um, her videos are always just, uh, I just love her. If you haven't heard of her, you should check her out. And she made a video recently about like us being afraid to look like we're trying. And I already knew she was gonna read my life when I clicked on it. And literally the video, she talked about like, we're afraid of like, showing the try, right? Like we wanna just show it when it's good. And I think that's what I wanted. I wanted this to just be good. I think it shows up in a variety of areas of my life. 
in the same way. Like I want you all to see my grit and my perseverance through school and you know, all of that and my down days. But at the end of the day, you know, for example, with my PhD, I didn't go into it thinking, oh yeah, I'm sharing about my PhD journey and then at some point I'm gonna fail and drop out and you know, like you don't go into it thinking that. You go into it hoping that, you know, you have the happy ending on the other side of it. I've caught myself hesitating to make certain decisions in life because I don't want it to look like I don't know what I'm doing. Look like. Building a life for yourself that's inching closer and closer to a life you actually want to live requires that someone, somewhere, sometime might actually witness you trying to live it. Yes, people might see you suck at dating. Some of those people might even say something mean to you about it. But, say it with me, those people are butts. And watching that video really motivated me to just share, right? Like, to share pieces and parts of everything that's going on, but definitely to be honest about the fact that my relationship didn't necessarily end in a fairy tale story in a proposal video for you guys. So, um, I really need to get on the road, um, but I wanted to make sure I recorded this video for you guys, probably because this may be my last video of 2020. Um, I don't know yet, uh, but I do think it's a high possibility that this could be my last video of 2020, and I just want to be honest about where I am, be honest about the reality that it's hard for me to have hope right now, but I know it's in there. Um, be honest about my mental health and that if any of you are in the same boat, that you should not be hesitating. If you need an accountability partner, someone to help motivate you to reach out to a therapist or a counselor if you need apps or different, um, you know, I know like betterhelp.com and there's another one that I've seen an ad for. Um, you know, if you need someone to push you to seek help, do it. Like I have two friends right now that are on me about making sure that I am reaching out to um, potential new counselors and, and getting in. I'm coming out of 2020 very differently than I thought. <laughs> um, a lot of my life looks different right now. I don't necessarily recognize the me in this season and that's probably contributing to some of how I'm feeling but like I'm here I am getting up every day and literally like I said dragging one foot in front of the other hopefully at some point it will just it will move from a drag to a to a walk to hopefully a run you know and I look forward to getting my joy back and um, just being healthy in mind, spirit, body. I look forward to what 2021 will bring, not, you know, having my eyes on the prize as if 2021 is going to, you know, change everything. But it will be a big year because dog on it, I don't care what it takes for me to get this dissertation done, I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna walk the stage and I am going to graduate. I'm going to figure out what the heck to do with my life after that. 2021 inevitably will bring about some big changes for me. Um, I just, I want to be better and healthier so that I can, you know, embrace everything I'm supposed to get out of this season and be ready for what's next. And I'm going to fight to stay in the hands of God and, you know, nothing can separate us from the love of God. That verse is so important in a season like this when it feels like, Lord, I can't hear you. Are you there? Are you listening? Do you care? I know you do, but like, homie, really? <laughs> like, really? But I'm holding on to that, y'all, and I am just, I'm, I'm, I have to. I don't have another option. I guess that's, that's the moral of the story. I don't have another option. I can't give up. I can't quit. 
I have to go through this season and, and get what I'm supposed to get so that I can come out on the other side. So I've cleaned up my apartment and actually my car is packed. Um, I just wanted to take a second to sit down and talk to you guys and make sure that I got this video done before I headed out. So I just want to say thank you. Thank y'all for checking on me. Thank you for standing in the gap as my community and taking care of my family. Those who did and prayed for us while I was here and couldn't do anything. Um, y'all mean the absolute world to me. Um, even the ones that I haven't met, even the ones that just check on me in the DMs, like you all, whew, you encourage my heart. You have encouraged my heart in so many ways. And I'm so grateful to have this platform to even share with you guys, to walk with you guys through the good stuff, the exciting stuff, and, and you know, this, this other stuff. Whatever 2020 has been, I don't know if we have a word for her, but do that too. So I love you guys and have a great Christmas and a happy new year. And I'll talk to you guys in 2020. Bye.